and welcome to St. Peter Chanel, where we are family. I once again extend the warm welcome now to all of you who are viewing now from your homes, from those who are viewing for the first time, and for those now who are viewing from beyond the parish borders, welcome all of you. As we know that we are on the journey ourselves, where we encounter the Christ in so many ways, many times when we do not see it. But primarily we see him when we gather for Eucharist. And so we gather together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And as we enter these mysteries together as one family, we call to mind our sins, especially for the times we have failed to recognize the Lord in our presence, for the times we've doubted or lived in fear, for the times we have sinned, we humbly bow before the Lord and ask for his mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. And with all the angels and saints, we too give glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, with renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God, whose mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God works through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will find me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption." God raised this Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. 
the word of the Lord. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, Lord you, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, Lord, you you will show us the path path of of life. life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delight at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, If you invoke as father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? He replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it's now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find the body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found the things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! 
How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel that we hear today is one of Luke's most impressive teaching gospels. We say in catechetical terms, a pedagogical gospel. He was speaking about how we come to faith. But this is also important because it speaks to us today. First of all, it was shared by a church gathered at home just as you are today. Second, it was preserved by the early church under a church under tremendous stress from the outside forces, much like you today. The question back then on everyone's mind must have been, where is Christ in all of this, all that we're going through? I thought he was the one to save us. And so Luke answers that question for us. You know, it's not my custom to review the gospel that you have just heard, but exceptions can be made. And so let's go through this gospel today. It's Easter night, three days after the public crucifixion of our Lord by the Romans. The women have gone to the tomb to prepare the body, but did not find the body. It's a strange and dark time for them. We're introduced now to two men, one named Cleopas. These two are heading away from Jerusalem, and you can only imagine what they were going through. The tragedy, the fear, the terror, all their hopes vanished, lost. They are on the way to Emmaus, a town lost in oblivion. But Luke has a unique way of taking these little insignificant towns and villages and lighting them up with significance. You just have to think of name, the widow's son being raised to new life. Or Nazareth, we heard, what good can come from Nazareth? And Emmaus, where on earth is Emmaus? In fact, you can hardly find it on a map. So these two are coming back to resume their lives, thinking, was it worth it? No doubt they spent a lot of time following an itinerant preacher and after giving up perhaps a successful life beforehand, wondering, was this all worth it? So not only feeling fear, terror, anger, dejection, now they're feeling embarrassment on top of everything, foolishness. Downcast, they meet a stranger whom they do not recognize. Of course, it is the Lord. Now, if it was me, I would have jumped up and down saying, it is me, look at my hands, look at my feet. See? And by the way, didn't I say to stay in Jerusalem where you would receive the power from on high? Why are you going the wrong way? Like many of us, these two probably had a knowledge of God after a Lord, after they walked with him, they talked with him, but they did not have his words in his heart. They had head knowledge, but they didn't have the heart knowledge. But instead of embarrassing them or humiliating them or adding to their heartache, Jesus does a remarkable thing. Our Lord has them tell him what happened. 
He gets them to talk about their experience. He makes them spill everything, and everything comes out. They pour it out, the pain, the hurt, the frustration, the anger. And in the midst of this sharing, they get to a village, and our Lord pretends to go further. And they say to him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. In other words, it is time for Vespers. Most of the verses that we hear take place of the journey, meeting and coming to a place. And then we hear they sit down for a meal, and in rapid succession, Jesus takes, blesses, and shares the bread, these short verses. And then suddenly the scales are removed from their eyes, and they recognize him, which all goes back to that very first that they were prevented from recognizing him before. They saw him, but they did not recognize him. And now they recognize him, and with that he vanishes from their sight. God wanted them to go through the experience, to sit with the pain, the hurt, the frustration. It was then that he revealed himself, and they would recognize him to see who he really was. And with that, he disappears. My experience has always been that once you hit the wall and fall down, you get up, you see the world in a whole different way. That's been my personal experience. And I'm sure that's what happened to them. They saw the Lord now. But the two men don't stick around. They don't say, stay with us, comfort us, encourage us, help us, hold our hand. No. They say, they remember, weren't our hearts gradually burning as he was speaking to us when we were on the road? The gradual nature of the burning heart corresponds to the gradual walk along the road when he explained all that the prophets shared, starting with Moses. They came to see and understand. It is a catechetical story because it is a story of faith. It's a story how all of us come to faith after we put down all the pretenses and sit with everything, we see the Lord in our midst. And they race back to Jerusalem. They find Peter explaining to the apostles gathered around him, Peter saying, he is risen. There's great excitement in the room. And then these two bust in to share how they came to recognize him in the breaking of the bread, which, by the way, any time you hear those three words, blessed, broken, and shared, is always a reference to Eucharist the shared experience. I always love that story, as I said, because it is indeed our story, our story of coming to faith. Because many times we are stuck. We are on the journey. We're looking for something. The search for God, the quest for God is our experience in difficult moments. Sometimes we don't see him, but we know something has happened. God is there but we don't have the full experience. Jesus walks with us through our dark moments, leading us into the light. He is with you now. He is with you right now. And he leads us into an experience of community. And while we are not together physically in the sharing of the bread and word, we are one in the spiritual communion. Right now, we are together in our common experience. You know, the question asked in spiritual direction is very simply, do you recognize God in the experience that you're going through right now? Be that loss or grief, anger, frustration, joy, or love. I've seen it in God's presence and the generosity of you folks, in families walking together, especially on the properties here, dads and kids together like I've never seen before. I see God in those who respect social distancing out of respect for human life. So many other ways when you have eyes to see. And Luke reminds us, as he did his community, that God himself journeys with us in the person of his Son, always leading us forward. And the great event, the sacred meal, is when we come to experience him if we have eyes of faith. So I invite you now to take a moment and ask the Lord. Simply say, journey with us in our sadness, despair, frustration, or lack of faith. 
and lead us to a true encounter, Lord. When you stop and say these things, you'll find that your prayers have more meaning. They're not just said. Your reading of the scriptures will be full. You experience the God of love, the God of life, holding your hand through this time. All is good. Do not be afraid. St. John Paul II entitled his apostolic exhortation on Eucharist called Mani Nobiscum Domine, Stay With Us. May that be our prayer during this time we're going through right now. Stay with us. As Pope Francis wrote in his recent apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, he introduced us to the term accompaniment. It's the call to journey with those who struggle. So let us accompany one another to recognize the risen Christ in our midst, especially with those who cannot see the Lord at work, with those who, know, who we know and love, who live in fear and doubt. Accompany those who do not recognize or know the Christ in the midst of the events taking place and the people around them. This is what it means to be intentional disciples. And so, as the psalmist says, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Amen. And so, my friends, we profess that faith as God's people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conscious that God hears us, let us lift up our prayers and petitions today. For all medical professionals and first responders, that they might be strengthened by their hope in the risen Christ as they confront this current epidemic, pandemic rather. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all pastors of souls, that they might be strengthened in their diligent response to navigating these new pathways that this time has presented to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for our Archbishop-elect, Gregory Hartmeyer, as he begins this new time of ministry and service, to the people of the Archdiocese of Atlanta. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. For our parish family here at St. Peter Chanel, that we might continue to recognize the Lord in our current situation, in one another, even during this time of social distancing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, especially Betty Santimi, former resident of St. George Village. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our seminarian, Avery Daniel, who will be leaving us now to continue now his studies in New Orleans. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of all life, hear the prayers of your people, those prayers that we bring before you spoken and unspoken. For they come before you in the name of the Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
As we make our offering, I would like to extend a word of thanks now to once again to all of you now for supporting the parish by your weekly giving online or in the envelope. I thank all of you who are making contributions now beyond the parish, who are helping us out. We are very appreciative of your generosity and your support. Thank you very much. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. In your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given to us human hands have made. Let it become the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in Christ's divinity, who humbled himself to take on our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. In your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Let it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the offering we bring before you. And Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is Father of all. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been crucified and sac sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with St. Peter Chanel, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joel, our administrator, Bernard, our auxiliary bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have gathered before you now. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. As we hear these words again tonight, we ask you to look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And let us take a moment to offer to one another a sign, a verbal gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
For Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of all the world. Blessed are those called today to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray in thanksgiving. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by the eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the blessing, there's just a few announcements. One is just to say a word of thanks to our seminarian, Avery Daniel, who, as I said, will be leaving us now to go for a 30-day retreat and then continue studies now at Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans. We want to thank you for your help to us as always. And while I'm sorry that you came <laughs> during this time, the COVID time, but so many people have emailed me and wanted to say thank you for your excellent lecturing and all the help, everything else. Thank you, Avery. My friends, I've been sending out uh, weekly updates and information through Constant Contact to keep you informed. If you are not receiving them and would like to receive these important updates, please visit the parish website, which is stpeterschanel.org. Also, we are only five people away from signing up now for registering for the YouTube channel for St. Peter Chanel. So, Make sure that you tell your friends to do that so that we can continue on the good work here in the parish. And so with that, I wish you all a blessed week, a healthy week. And while we continue now social distancing, to pray for one another in this important time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to glorify God with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.